like the folks you meet on. The Brooklyn Bridge has been an indelible part of the New York City skyline for nearly 140 years. When it was completed in 1883, it was hailed as an engineering marvel and called the eighth wonder of the world. It also linked what were then two of America's largest cities, New York and Brooklyn. The story of its construction is a drama in itself. And now a new book, Building the Brooklyn Bridge, gives readers an inside view of the 14-year construction process that's been largely out of sight until now. On a May night in 1983, more than a million people gathered along the East River in New York City to say happy 100th birthday to the Brooklyn Bridge. The celebration included parades, street fairs, and one of the biggest fireworks displays the city had ever seen. Soon after the bridge opened. In the crowd that day was historian Jeff Richman. <laughs> the mega party touched off a passion in him for the bridge that's lasted for decades. I was on top of the Eagle Warehouse over here, and uh, it was spectacular. And so I collected an original invitation to the opening of the bridge and woodcuts, prints, drawings. That collection is the foundation of his new book. So this guy. Here. It uses more than 250 images, including stereo views a 19th century version of 3D that gives readers a never before seen view of the bridge. So cool. <laughs> I'm just in the picture. You are. They tell the harrowing and ultimately triumphant tale of how hundreds of engineers and craftsmen worked underwater and high above the river to complete a construction marvel. Isn't it a miracle? It is very much a miracle, and it is a meeting of the most primitive ideas in terms of technology. The bridge was very much cutting edge in so many of its aspects. The story is rich with human drama. John Roebling, who was well known for building suspension bridges in other parts of the country, died following an accident while surveying the site before work even started. His 32-year-old son, Washington Roebling, took over the job, but was himself physically unable to supervise the work. And did a tremendous job, but became so exhausted and also suffered from the bends as a result of going down into the caissons that were going to become the foundations for the towers, that he could not see at times, and he had a telescope where he could watch the construction. The job of conveying Roebling's ideas to the workers was left to his wife, Emily. Who certainly, you know, didn't have an opportunity to study as an engineer, but became this key liaison with contractors, with the assistant engineers, to be able to go out there and even reach the point where she was consulting contractors were contacting her and her alone and asking about specifications and the demands of the contracts. Sounds like she was quite the businesswoman. She was. Innately. She was. Some might call her the spirit. The yes. father, the son, <laughs> the yes, spirit. See, you can do it that way. The Brooklyn Bridge, completed in 1883. But the work has never really finished on or around the bridge in the nearly 140 years since it opened. Horses and carriages have been replaced by an early cable car, followed by a thoroughfare that carries more than 115,000 cars a day, and even a new bike lane to serve the 3,000 cyclists who cross the river on a daily basis. Oh my God, this looks so different. Yes. Those changes also include 85 acres of the former industrial space that's been transformed over the last decade into the Brooklyn Bridge Park. Eric Landau is president of the Brooklyn Bridge Park Corporation. Where does the bridge fit into this, this landscape of a story? 
So obviously we are named, our park is named after the Brooklyn Bridge, Brooklyn Bridge Park. It is such an iconic piece of New York City and beyond. And we right now are in the last phase of park construction, which is a two acre area that directly connects the Dumbo section of the park here to the Southern Piers. In a fitting tribute, that last section of the park set to be unveiled next month will be named for the woman so instrumental to the bridge's construction, Emily Roebling. The idea did not originate with us to name it after Emily Warren Roebling. That actually came from the community. Right. Um, but we thought it was such an amazing opportunity. The bridge has seen New York grow up, kind of get beat down. It's seen renaissance. I mean, this bridge really has marked much of the city's history. Oh, absolutely. And so when the bridge went up, those towers that you see behind me were pretty much the tallest thing in New York. And they towered above the skyline such as it was in New York City. Towered and endured, just as it was predicted by Washington Roebling, who said there is no reason why the Brooklyn Bridge should not remain intact for centuries. What's it like to be on the bridge each time you walk these planks? It really is a thrill every time I'm up here. And the energy that you get up here as you shout above the traffic going by and the bicycles going by and the pedestrians going by. And this is one of humankind's great creations. And to be able to enjoy it and stand under the towers and under the cables and the suspenders, and it's just uh, wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Amazing. If you haven't been on the Brooklyn Bridge, if you haven't taken a trip down to Brooklyn Br Bridge Park, you have got to make it there because so much has been improved, so much has been built. It, it is just gorgeous. The first two years I lived in the city, I never walked the bridge. I don't know why I didn't. And the next time around, I was much smarter and have done it numerous times. The, the walk is the best, but they do yeah. the new bike lane now. Bike yes. traffic has doubled since they opened. It seems to be a big, big hit.